In this video, we're going to discuss the HUD interface behavior. So here I am in a scientific laboratory. Uh, with me in the control room is Jill Turner, our research assistant. We have Dr. Pembroke in the laboratory. He is going to be leading the experiment. And what we'll be doing today is attempting to contact a being in another dimension and transmitting that being through the portal that Dr. Pembroke has created to our own dimension so that we can study it. So in order to do that, I'll need to activate the terminal. Let me just punch in my credentials. Great. So now we have our inter interactive terminal here. Um, and just real quick, let's make sure that Dr. Pembroke can hear us. Um, I click the button. Dr. Pembroke, can you hear us? Yes, I hear you loud and clear. Excellent. All right, so uh, this is the terminal for the device that Dr. Pembroke has created. It is the dimensional spectroscopy device. So what that means in fancy scientific language is we're going to click this button and that activates the portal to the other dimension. And we have targeted a being in that dimension. You can see him on the screen there. And that's the being that we're going to try to pull from that other dimension into our own so that we can begin to study it. So it, once I click this button, transdimensional convergence, that'll convey the being from the other dimension to our own. So here it goes. Let me go ahead and click that button. Oh boy. Um, and something seems to have gone wrong. Let me deactivate the portal just to make sure nothing else comes through. Okay, portal is off. We're going to turn off the terminal. Dr. Pembroke looks to be down, but we were able to successfully bring the being through the dimensional portal into our own dimension. So all in the name of science, right? All right, let's go take a look and see how all this is put together. So the first thing I wanted to cover is the HUD screen itself. Here you can see it is called HUD screen number nine. That'll be important later. I'll just point that out. Um, the only other things that you need to know about the HUD screen, you can design it any way you want to and as many buttons as you need. But at the end of the day, these buttons need to be set up in a certain way. The two take homes here are that the button text, whatever it is that you put here, in the button text is what you're going to be assigning to the button in the behavior, which we'll get to in a moment. And it is case sensitive. So be really careful, make sure that you don't typo, make sure that you're uh, aware of the casing. And the only other thing you need to make sure that you do is in the action for that button, select return button ID to Lua. And that's going to pass the word that you put in there um, through to the script so that it, it acts as a sort of parameter. And as you can see, it really doesn't matter what you say. You can say all kinds of funny things and it'll know what you mean. As long as you click that button, it'll do the action that you've assigned. So let's go take a look at the behavior. All right. So there is a lot going on in this scene. I kind of went a little bit nuts with the setup. Um, so there's a little bit more to this than just an individual behavior, but, uh, I don't want to get too off course and, and get into the weeds as far as all these other things that I'm doing. So I'll, I'll touch on those things, but I'll do separate videos for the individual behaviors that I'm using. Uh, but let's just try to focus here on the HUD interface behavior. So this is, uh, what activates the HUD screen when I uh, interact with the object that it's assigned to. Uh, you can see we have a use range. That's just how close do I need to be to the object in order to activate the HUD screen. I uh, use the E button to use the object and turn on the HUD screen. Um, now when the HUD screen is open, I'm not able to move the screen around. It's kind of locked in position. So just bear that in mind. Um, I didn't, Really like how short this console was, but I was trying to work with it the best I could. Um, now there are five button options here. You don't have to use all of them, but one of the ones that you do have to use uh, is the exit HUD uh, 
button. So make sure that one of your buttons is the exit HUD button because as I mentioned, the screen is locked and there's really no other way to escape the HUD other than to exit the HUD with a button. So definitely reserve one of those for that action. But then you have a number of other actions. You have activate links, you have play audio, destroy object, and activate if used. And we'll get into each one of these, but before I get into each one, I want to just briefly mention that I am not using destroy object in this demonstration. It's the only one I chose not to use. And the reason I chose not to use it is because the object that it destroys is whatever it's assigned to. So in this case, it's assigned to our console. If I were to click a button that is meant to destroy the object, it's going to destroy the console and then we won't be able to interact with it anymore. And it wouldn't make any sense for the scene. So I chose not to do that. Um, that might be exactly what you need for your scene. I don't know, but in my case, it just didn't apply. So I didn't use it. Okay. But we are using activate link. So the dimensional spectroscopy, I don't know why I chose such a difficult word to say, but I've practiced <laughs> just for you. So, uh, is activating links, right? So if we just move into the scene here and we click our, uh, our logic link buttons. You can see there's a lot going on in this scene. We'll get to some of this here in a moment, but there's three links that are coming from the console. And uh, one of them is going to a um, particle behind the, the creature here. That's our, our portal that we saw. Uh, there's another particle up here that you may not have seen. It's just creating like a little bit of smoke. Um, and then uh, the screen itself is being activated. So by default, uh, it is turned off and when it's turned on um, it switches from this image to this image um, so that's that's what's causing that effect and we have talked about change texture before I'm pretty sure I've got a video on that so if you're curious about this behavior I'm not going to get into it here just go watch that other video and that'll explain everything you need to know about that if that applies to your scene uh, but just know that the activate link is just activating whatever's whatever it's linked to, and you can activate more than one object. That's the kind of take home in this case. Okay. Uh, then we have the intercom button, and the intercom button is playing audio, and the audio that it's going to play is sound slot number one. So that's the the uh, voice that you heard from Dr. Pembroke when I click the intercom button, we could hear him respond back to us. The only other sound that we have is the sound that you hear when I interacted with the terminal to begin with. So that's the typing sound, me punching in my credentials to, to load up the software. So that's what that was. That's the only other sound slot we have. All right, the next button we have is transdimensional convergence. Um, that is the button that brought the creature in. So that was doing a lot. What I have assigned to it is activate if used. And the reason I chose to use that is because I already have something activating a link. I can't use that one again and not activate the same links, right? So I needed some other way to activate something else. And that's where we're using activate if used. So in order to explain this one, I'm going to need to first make sure that you have the developer settings uh, available for you in your panel. If you don't see that, click on the edit menu here and then click on settings. Go to the developer tab and uh, check the box that says display object tools developer mode. That's going to turn on that little panel. Very important in order to move on to the next portion of this. So once you have that activated, we can click on the developer uh, settings screen and there's a lot going on here I don't want to get into too much of this the important thing is the if used field so when I click that button I'm using it if it's used I'm activating something by its name so that something happens to be this object back here which I have called switch one um, and so really I'm just activating whatever object, you don't need a logic link to it. You're just activating it by name and then that'll, that'll activate that, uh, that object. Now in my case, it has its own behavior, which is a timed event. And that timed event is triggering all these other things to occur. 
again i don't want to get too far in the weeds as to like how the rest of this is set up but i'll just i'll briefly go over sort of how it works just in case you're curious without you know getting into nitty-gritty details so we're activating this object it has a behavior on it doesn't really matter which behavior it is it's going to activate whatever behavior is it's triggering it and when that uh, behavior is activated it does it you know its thing whatever it does so that object is linked to this machine it's linked to the creature and a couple other things and it's just activating those things so it's triggering additional events uh, one of the things it's activating is this other device over in the far uh, corner and that also has links that it's linked to and it's activating a number of things so you can kind of get where i'm going with this it's one thing leads to the next leads to the next so it's a chain event um, we'll get into more, uh, you know, like complicated setups like this in the future. I don't want to muddy the waters too much. Just suffice it to say that if use activate something and then that something can then be used to activate additional things. Okay. All right. Just like a logic link, really. It's just like a, kind of like a logic link by, by name rather than a, a physical link. Okay. And then we have, uh, activate links again so deactivate was another button that i had and when i clicked that that turned off the portal it turned off the screen and i'm just using activate links again so one button activates the links the other one deactivates the links just toggling it back and forth like on and off switch okay and then lastly we mentioned before the exit hud screen just to turn off the hud be able to escape it so that was a really important button to, to have on there uh, but that's it. That's everything you need to know in order to set up your own HUD interface. And as you can see from this demonstration, you can really do a lot of stuff with this. You can really kind of go ham and, and uh, use your imagination and let it go wild. If you enjoyed the video or if you learned anything new, I would appreciate you clicking that like button down below. If you're new here or if you just haven't subscribed yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Now's the perfect time to subscribe. And if you'd like a notification for whenever a new video is posted, just click the bell icon and that'll notify you whenever new videos are available for you. Thanks so much for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.